Do you have that thing that you know you want to do, or maybe that you were created to be, but you let the opinions of others get in the way? Maybe you really care what other people think or what they say about what you want to do next. Well, today's guest has from a very early age learned to march to the beat of his own drum. Even though he was misguided in high school by a guidance counselor, he learned very early on to listen to his inner knowing, overcome fear, and become all the things that he was created to be. And we each have that exact same calling on our life to do exactly what you're supposed to do. So whatever that is in your life, let today's guest inspire you to overcome fear, to let the opinions of others not make a huge difference in your life and do that thing that you were created to do. Our guest today went from becoming a pro wrestler to a stand-up comic to now he is a hypnotherapist and a podcaster and a lot in between. His story will inspire you to go and live all out. Welcome to the show, Rusty Diamond. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Autumn. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. So obviously last week we met just for me being a guest on your podcast and we had so much fun and just getting to know you better. You were totally an inspiration about how somebody can actually listen to the beat of their own drum. And I think that's just such a lacking thing of like for all of us, but especially young people of like actually being able to turn off that outside noise and listen to what you desire in your own life and making it happen. And you have made so much happen in such a short amount of years that you've been alive. And so I would love for you to take us from and share the audience from like high school, like the, your vision for your life, all the way how you went, ended up going from pro wrestler to everything in between to now a hypnotherapist. So what the heck? How did that happen? Uh, well, first off, um, I mean, don't I only bring people onto my podcast that I, I know are the, in the same group, and then you know have that you know same inspiring story and are can interact with me and oh, well, thanks. Um, yeah be able to go 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 and I yes I, I was I was drawn to you I'm like okay this is going to be good and so let's see so it all starts back way back in high school geez wow that's a few years back but um so well I went to my guidance counselor I don't know if I've talked about this on on the podcast I've talked about this before so I went to my guidance counselor and I grew up in a, um, in the suburbs of Portland, Oregon. And uh, yeah, I told my guidance counselor, I want to be a professional wrestler. And <laughs> uh, I got, I got about as many, uh, as much of a response as when I do a stand up comedy show, uh, just, <laughs> uh, just crickets. And he's just like, no, that's, that's the dumbest idea. It was very much everyone at our school was, you know, kind of set out to, you know, go to college, get the, you know, get the house, get the, you know, uh, you know, 2.4 kids and a dog or whatever it may be now, but I think that's yes. what it was then. And, uh, you know, it just was not something I was into. And, you know, my guidance counselor, he told me, no, you're too small. And that's a stupid idea. Why would you ever want to do something like that? You should go to college. And for some reason, I sort of listened to him, even though in my head, I knew he was wrong. But I was like, I guess, like, sure. But then, so I went and it's like, a few months later, I was like, you know what, screw that, that guy, he's a jerk. I don't, I don't need to listen to him. So I was going to go work at a, um, a marina down in Northern Arizona and not, you know, take some time off from school. But then I, so I applied like a few other schools and I mean, they weren't great schools. I, I barely graduated college. I don't know how I graduated. I, um, but I you mean, went. I probably, so you did it. You yeah, went to your thing in college, and were, were you wrestling at all during this time? No, I wasn't doing anything. Uh, I mean, if it wouldn't have been for me paying off my teachers, you guys, 
that's something else if you need to know uh if you ever want to get through high school pay off your teachers oh no uh, uh so uh but anyway so yeah so that's uh that's a side side story but that's a side hustle yeah anyway go that's, ahead. That's, a, that's a side hustle that's so, a side hustle job for teachers okay yeah yeah if you're a teacher you need some extra money you find a kid that's like me uh who that's is hilarious. in the hospital. I mean, I was doing stuff like that in high school. So in high school, um, eBay was just sort of getting started. And uh, yeah, I was working. I was working. I was delivering pizzas for Domino's, going to school. And then I got on eBay and I started selling stuff. I was selling. I mean, I, I don't know if I want to give away my age. But uh, so I was selling pro wrestling videotapes. And uh, I ended up getting this like what was it i want to say it was 12 12 cds full of um video clips like little short video clips of, uh that were like you know up to 30 seconds long of some adult material um oh no and, yeah and so i got a hold of that um and then i started copying it i had my roommate had a a CD copier. Oh no. So bottom line is you've just been a hustle. You have figured out I've, from the get go, like I am going to yep. do some, I think now we call them side hustles, but back then you were just a hustler from the get go. And I think yep. certain people have that in them. So you just went for it and realized like, look, I can make money here. I can do this and I can do that. Yeah. I mean, I had kids in my school, parents buying them cars all the time, but Mercedes, you know, Land Rover stuff. And I did mine. I went and bought myself a Cadillac with the money I spent. My parents didn't buy, buy me a car. But anyway, let's go in far into the future. So uh, eventually I think, hmm, screw my guidance counselor. I'm going to go, you know, try this wrestling out. I had a buddy I met and we'd go to shows together, um, local shows, because it was really hard to go to wrestling shows in Portland for uh, 15 years or so at least Fifth, yeah at least 15 years um because um there was like the the boxing wrestling commission and they weren't allowed like if there was steroids or stuff uh yeah. you couldn't yeah do testing for that and it was just too much of a money so how does one hit. step into like oh i'm just going to become a pro wrestler like how do you just step into that oh uh, that's a great question so he just uh, my friends started training. They're like, well, we're going to start training. And I was like, well, you know, that's cool, man. I'll, I'll, I'll be there to, you know, cheer you on and stuff. And then one day he's like, Hey, you got to do this. I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And myself, I am, I was very much a loud mouth at the shows and I would voice my opinions about wrestlers. And I was very into the shows. And so that first day I got in there and the wrestlers were in there that I've been talking trash to, they were very happy for me to be in there because they got to really test my limits and see, uh, see how, how much I really wanted to be there. And I mean, I got, I got, I got beat up pretty well, but I kept coming back because I loved it. And I just, it was something I wanted to do. And I just kept at it, kept at it. I ended up, the only time I ever got hurt in wrestling was I, I did a flip. I over rotated probably within two or three weeks of training and I sprained my ankles and they thought I was just going to be done. And that was it. A lot of people, you know, one little thing happens, they're done. Not me. I uh, stayed out maybe two weeks, but I kept going out there to training. I just wasn't getting in the ring. And then eventually um, I had a guy that was, six five four hundred pounds hit me over the back of over the back with the steel chair and then all of a sudden my ankles didn't hurt anymore and i felt good so um yeah so i got to do that for a while and travel around go to you know any fraternal organization you can think of on the uh on the west coast from uh you know bella coola british columbia down to down to I'm probably somewhere in central California, uh, maybe Chico. great way to travel, I, learn people travel. So for the people that are listening, they can't see you. How old were you at this time and how tall and you know, what'd you weigh to like enter these, the ring? So when I started, I was 
six to a hundred and sixty five pounds, maybe something like that, soaking wet. Um, yeah, I was just a little small guy. I was, and so, I, yeah, I'm going up against people that are yeah four hundred pounds, and you know, yeah, and like, how old were just, you at the time when you first started? Twenty seven, maybe or so. so Twenty seven. Uh, all, all of a sudden, older. I'm just going to be a pro wrestler. So from high school, ten years later you decide like, yeah. I'm still going to be a pro wrestler. Like, okay, yeah. I'm not training during these 10 years. I'm just going to like, you know, train a little bit and step into the ring at 27. At awesome. 27. Yeah. It seemed like the right time. It was either then or never. So, um, I eventually got to, I don't know what happened to my guidance counselor. I don't, I didn't get to go back and, uh, you know, rub it in his face, but, uh, I didn't need to, I, I was, I was happy and I got to do that for a while. I'm still involved in it. Still. Um, like I, I referee now, but I mean, I've done, you know, everything from setting up the ring, running the lights, uh, doing the, the audio to filming, to refereeing, to managing, to, uh, color commentary, to play by play by ring, to ring announcing. And I, I just, I don't know. You just love it. You just love it. I, I, I loved it. I loved it. And eventually uh so i mean i was on the road this time they probably like 2017 i was on the road from usually thursday night until monday morning and then go to work monday through thursday evening and so at that time i was working a job i was delivering flooring to houses driving a truck and i was um, walking across a driveway that was unfinished and there was a hole covered by a piece of plywood and I'd have to walk over this every time to bring the flooring in and the piece of plywood moved. I stepped in there and uh, I destroyed my knee and that was that was the end. That was the end of my pro wrestling right there. Anytime in the ring after that. Um, I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was just going to be a little setback but it wasn't. It was it just stopped everything in his tracks. I mean, there was no more going on these trips and, you know, driving from, you know, starting in Portland, Oregon at nine o'clock at night on Thursday, driving, uh, you know, six hours up to Vancouver, BC, uh, sleeping for a few hours, then wake up, drive four hours to east to Kelowna do a show there on Friday. And then when the show is over, like at 10, drive back to Vancouver, which is, you know, you know, four hours again, and then wake up in the morning and then go do a show in Vancouver that night. And then as soon as that show was over, like as soon as the show was over, we'd hop in the car and drive um, six hours down to Portland to pick someone up and then drive nine hours down to Northern California to and we'd usually get there right about when the show's starting and then as soon as our match was matches were over we'd hop back in the car and then drive the nine hours back up and then go to work so behind the scenes a pro wrestler yeah no private yeah. jets picking you up and taking you all over the place right so yeah. obviously you did that for years and you know we hear stories over and over of athletes like you know it's never planned it's just all of a sudden done and over and What's yep. great about your story is that number one, it started so late. So you had some sense of identity before you stepped into that ring and became, you know, that identity. And, yep. you know, you you have highlight careers, but you also had so many jobs and side hustles in there, which I think is important to highlight about you because I feel like sometimes people get in those jobs and all of a sudden those jobs become 40 year careers. Like, oops, this yeah. was a job. And all of a sudden I just wake up and 30, 40 years later, I'm still here. But you just kept those passions, like kept chasing that passion and never let go of it. But you were also willing. And I think sometimes it's like one or the other people fall into that like employee thing where they'd never meant to. And then, and, or people have a dream, but they're not willing to do the work, like whatever it is, deliver pizzas, do whatever, do flooring, whatever it is to get you to that dream, rather it's to finance or to meet the right people or to pay the bills or whatever. But you kept that completely highlighted and just went for it. Then all of a sudden it comes to an end. But yeah. as we know, sometimes when things end, other things are born. So then all of a sudden you're on a different stage. So tell us how you ended up on the next stage. Yes. I mean, uh, I just, yeah, everything was stopped. I got super depressed and then, yeah, I went to, uh, 
a therapist and uh, she gave me, you know, I was telling her like, you know, I, I don't know what to do. Like everything I've done has always been physical. And, you know, I, you know, want to use my brain for jobs. So I, you know, cause I can't rely on, you know, on that, my knee with all this. And so she gave me a book and there was two jobs that were listed in there. And one was a Reiki and one was a hypnotist. And I said, oh, hypnotist. Okay. All right. I mean, that can be interesting. So I looked up hypnotist classes in Portland, Oregon, and uh, called up the first guy and talked to him on the phone for 20 minutes and was fascinated. He's probably, well, he is. He's great at hypnosis. I mean, he got me to come in there that next day. I talked to him for an hour and a half. And I was very skeptical about hypnosis. Yes. I mean, I come from I come from wrestling. Like, I don't, I don't believe anything I see. Uh, I don't believe anything I hear. Uh, I don't believe anything I watch. Uh, so yes. I thought it was, you know, just like a magic show. And then he <laughs> got me to sign up for the, the class and I signed up for the class. And, you know, that first day I, we were hypnotizing each other, the other people in the class, and I figured it out. And I was just, I mean, I felt good. Like for the first time and it was probably you know, eight, nine months at that time. I think it was probably around April or May. And that happened in July of 2017. So yeah, April or May of 2018. And yeah, first time I felt good and just was able to breathe. And I mean, like I said, like I barely, I had to pay my teachers off to graduate high school. Um, and here, like I got in and I kept saying hypnosis is great. I kept telling everybody, you know, hypnosis is great. I love this. This is the best thing. It's so, so cool. Like you got to try it. You got to let me, you got to let me hypnotize you. And then, uh, I mean, and lo and behold, I became the top of the class and I, I just, I didn't know that was a career option I could have done. You know, it was very much, Hey, go to this office job for 40 years, get a watch and die. You know, I, you know, that's what that's what they, they wanted me to do. And I didn't I guess I didn't go that way. And so, I mean, I got in hypnosis and I just. And now you're helping I, other people with it. I think what's great is when we find something that works for us, we share it. You know, how can you like yeah. keep it to yourself and, you know, for you to actually turn that in to part of your career and now helping other people through that process. I was a huge skeptic. Too, I was living in Hawaii and, you know, you always see the shows at amusement parks or something where somebody's, you know, making somebody walk around like a chicken or something fun, but, um, you know, to actually understand the science behind it and how powerful it can be for things like depression, anxiety, or for, you know, for you to actually be able to see your future a little bit clearer, clear off past junk, you know, whatever it may be. I'm a big believer and I have a good friend in Hawaii who is a hypnotherapist. And so you've turned that into a career and then um, on the side and not on the side, like another part of your career was, um, doing stand up comedy. So how does that get all thrown into the mix? So, okay. So when I was wrestling, when I first started, I lasted, it was probably about a year and a half or so. And that was already within the first year. Um, I was working a show. I had some people that were so mad at me that they wanted to kill me. So I learned very fast that I was good at getting getting people to react either some way or another. And I Which is, that's what comedy is. You just have to have the audience react one way or the other. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. And so I um when the concussion stuff started coming out and gotten re getting really big, um I there were, I had a couple of buddies who I was wrestling with who had to retire and they were both near my age ish and i have had concussions before i started wrestling and so i was like i better you know step back a little bit here and um yeah but i still wanted to be involved in wrestling since i loved it so much so i was like you know what i'm just gonna start comedy so i started it's like am i gonna be a stand-up comedian so i started going i um i don't know i don't know i i just went all in and i was way into that and um it's like all right so i was able to then you know make that into when i went back into wrestling which was sort of a mistake that just happened um because i wasn't planning on going back into the ring ever again but now things happen and i get put in a match and 
all of a sudden it's like, okay, well you did this, let's do another one. Let's put you in next week. And, you know, like, uh, yeah, that just kept going. So, um, I feel like what, with a lot of people and a lot of clients that I work with is that they have a dream or they have some interest. So something had to interest you, like maybe comedy didn't interest you, but you realized you do have a talent at something and that something kind of matched comedy. And so what happens is like right before you stepped in that ring with a whole bunch of people that were bigger than you that had way more experience than you and, or taking that stage at open mic night for the very first time, you know, and just seeing like, am I going to bomb this or, you know, what are people going to do to all the way to like coming out to the world? Like, Oh, by the way, I'm going to like do hypnotherapy. So there's a lot of fear in that that first step, like that anxiety, that fear of like, I have that dream, or I know I'd be good at this, but people never do it. Like, what is it that made you do it? Like step into that ring, step onto that stage, take that class, you know, put yourself out to the world. Like, Hey world, this is who I am. What, what is it right there that you're feeling? Do you feel nervous? Do you feel fear? Well, so this, this is my way to say this. So once, once you shit your pants, <laughs> you cannot shit your pants more. It doesn't I love matter. That. And I had, I, over those years, over those, you know, 10 years in between, I, I had plenty of moments where I screwed up bad. I did, I did stuff that was stupid. And, you know, I just got to a point where I was like, if I, if I, you know, already, you know, once you poop your pants, like it's not going to get worse. So it's like, everybody already knows I'm, I've been a screw up for the last 10 years. Like if I become a fresher wrestler, it's like, it can only go up. So That's now awesome. I can do something that I love and it can only get better. So I was, I and was, and I feel like that. people won't even get that bad. Like they won't screw up enough to get that bad to where it's only to go up. I feel like people won't take the risks to even go down or think, look, I can't mess this up anymore, but I love that because, you know, however you want to put it, you know, if you don't take the shot, you're never going to make it, you know, it's, it's right. all those things. But I love that because wh why not? Like, what else are you going to lose? And a lot of it is just people feel like they're going to lose. Like what to me, what are you going to lose? I, I don't know. Most of it, I think stems from ego. Like what will other people think? It's like, nobody else is paying my bills. Nobody else is helping me out or like giving me the career path that, you know, that most people will like lay in front of me what they think would be good. Just like that, that career counselor. And you hear these stories over and over about a teacher saying you're crazy or you'll never be good at that. And career counselors, I feel like there's so many stories like that. So it's uh -huh. good, inspiring to like not listen, but it's good to also see when people like feel that fear and do it anyway, like, look, this cannot get any worse. Might <laughs> as well. And yeah. I always feel like if you're, if you held those things inside of you, like you knew since you were young, like I was supposed to be a pro wrestler. And then you never did it. Like imagine that regret. And it's not, to me, it's not only about us, like us not living out our dreams, but there's always that ripple effect. Like, because you learned or because you taught or because your story is an inspiration, it's, it's a ripple effect into other people's lives. You inspire other people. And then to do stand up comedy, like, okay, that's just crazy. That's insane. Like, how do you just do that? It's a ripple effect. And then that, your knowledge and what you gain in your confidence builds you, but also has a ripple effect to help other people and so on and so on. And look, all of a sudden now you're, you're helping people in a totally different way. I hope so. I hope, I hope there's a few people who I, I've been able to, yeah, have some sort of positive effect on. And I mean, yeah, whether it's hypnosis or if it's something else, just, I mean, but can you imagine holding yeah. those things in you? I, I would be, I would be miserable. I would be miserable. I'd be, you know, uh, whatever. I, I would have tried that, that method of the, the life that guidance counselor wanted they to have me. And I would have failed so many times and not just gone right back to it, gone right back. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. It'll be good. And, mm -hmm. you know, eventually it's just like, okay, well, I'll try it my way. And my way was better. So. That's right. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. So I'm going to highlight two of the things that we spoke about earlier. Talk about um, your decision to quit drinking in the world of comedy. 
and what that kind of what you saw before and after that. And then also, I love what you're doing with the nonprofit and kind of how everything has led you to this point now. Sure. So, um, so yeah, this was 2014. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was doing comedy and I was out every night uh, till, you know, um, shows end at like 11. We leave the bar at 2.30 and then we usually end up hanging around for hour or two and this is every night just drink 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 and everyone is getting just wasted by the end of the night and so i mean i'm hanging out and comics are normally pretty depressed people and so you're getting a lot of depressed people hanging out together getting wasted and after a while it it wore on me and i just i was like i can't I can't do this. I, there's no way, no way I'm going to do this anymore. And I mean, it, it got me, I'd still go out sometimes, but I mean, that really took me away from a lot. And then I was started booking my own shows a lot more and, you know, doing places where it wasn't all centered around drinking and, you know, I could do what I wanted to do. And then, but I mean, it was good too with wrestling. Like the people I was traveling with were totally sober. So Mm -hmm. that really helped out. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, and it's been great. I mean, it's been, uh, I mean, yeah, in August, it'll be nine years ago. So, awesome. and I mean, yeah, I haven't even thought of wanting to get back to that. So what's the and, biggest th- difference between who you were before and who you are now? As far as drinking? Mm-hmm. Oh, what's the I biggest mean, difference, you know, well, noticed? When you leave, when you leave a bar and you come back every night, you know, people, some people remember you, but if I left, like I could leave the bar and I could go back to it today and there'd be the same people in there doing the same thing. And I'm, it just, it got really just tiring and really hard to just do mm-hmm. it over and over. I knew I was going to be that person. So yeah, I just stay away and it works. I'll go to bars, but yeah, it's not. Nah, I don't have it. I never had any desire to drink after that. And I've been around, yes, yeah, people that drink way too much. And that's a big like turn off from it for me. Um, and so now so you're rocking it out. You have four different podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. I think. And I, I more like, maybe. I think I like six or seven. Okay, but, uh, sorry, that was a few weeks. Well, no, it's cool. I, I I have three that I I do pretty regular regularly. Um, so we'll list and, all those podcasts in the show notes, so you guys can um, follow yeah. those pod- podcasts as well. And then oh, and then, and then yeah, then the nonprofit. So uh, one of my co-hosts, uh, Casey James, uh, we decided to start a nonprofit together that would be centered around sports, but also the most requested, least delivered item for people in need is socks. And so what we do is we are able to facilitate that and make sure that people are going to be able to get socks that can use socks because like, yeah, it's not getting, you know, people are donating everything but socks. So that's awesome. Oh. Yeah, I did not know that before I talked to you. And so um, we'll put that link also for the nonprofit work in that because I love the title. Tell everyone your title of the nonprofit. Sock em Up. So Sock em Up, org, And so, yeah, you can find that there. And um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's been a blast too. It's been a fun way to, you know, everything that I've done has been a fun way to meet new people too. And I'm happy I got to meet meet you and you yes, know that, that that's good. I you know makes me happy that you get to meet cool people that are doing cool things and yes. not doing the the regular thing. You're out living your best life. You're out and you're living in the in the sunshine every day and just yeah, having... I live in the sunshine. I never get out of the sun. I never spent tons of time outside and yesterday I went outside and was on a boat and got burnt. I'm like I forget I'm white, like really white. But yeah. um, because I do, I, I have a lot of, I mean, I'm spending a lot of time inside because I love what I do and I love being right here with people like you. And 
So yeah, I could be out sitting by the pool and on boats every day, but I choose this because it inspires me every day to be a better person and to connect. And so I want to close with this because I think that something that we all struggle with, and for some reason, it seems like you've mastered it better than a lot of people is that, and I've talked about this on prior shows is I believe like you've really stayed true to that, what I call that nudge in life, that nudge that says like, come on, you can do it. Like be that pro wrestler, do this hypnosis. And you're like, why? Like, what, why am I thinking? It's like, why, why are these desires? But you've really followed that, you know, despite fear, despite your poopy pants, you know, whatever it is, is that you've done it. And so I think one thing that's really helpful is to turn off that outside noise so we can listen to ourself and we can hear our own desires and what we're created for. Because I believe we're all different. Like we all have very unique gifts and those are supposed to come out of us. If we were all supposed to be the same, we'd, it'd be easy. But yeah. so one thing you've really mastered is kind of turning off that outside noise and tell us why you do that and a little bit of how you do that. Well, I guess I would also include a filter on my mouth, uh, the filter on my mouth, in my mind, um, all those, they're yeah. really gone. Um, there's, they might be a little tiny bit there, but I've just, I don't know. I'm i uh, I'm 40 years old and I, I know who I am. I know what I do. Um, I have a good idea of, of how people perceive me and I like who I am. And I, mm -hmm. I like what I do. I like how I like, I like being able to create and I like being able to help. And yeah. if I can do those two things, I'm good. I'm good. Well, however it is, it might, might change down mm -hmm. the line. I don't know, but if I'm doing those two things, I'm good. And so when you are obviously, when you have to put yourself out there, rather as pro wrestling, you know, comedy podcast, we have to put ourselves out there. And a lot of that has to be on social media. So tell us what you do on social media to keep the noise down. Ooh, okay. So social media, my social media is, um, I do have a few groups, like I'll check in. There's a, some booking groups I'll check into every once in a while. Um, and then I have what's available for sale around me because I, I've done reselling for a long time. So I always like to know what's around there. And then I have a group um, that is about Mike Judge stuff. So Beavis and Butthead, King of the Hill, Office mm -hmm. Space, Idiocracy, that kind of stuff. And that's about it. Everything else I've I've turned off and muted or whatever, whatever it's called. So, I mean, that's all I see. So I, and I don't really follow the news. I mean, like there's just I'm just focused on on getting my stuff. Because if I'm if I'm focused on all this other stuff, that's not gonna it's not gonna do anything either way for me. So why why put time and effort into it? Um, so I just just go. I mean, if I if I hear there's something going on over there, what's it gonna do? How how's that how's that gonna affect me and my ability to help people? Right. Not really yeah, too much. It's just so hard to, you know, the noise that comes in so hard and so fast and it's usually on a negative thing. And if it's positive, you know, then all of a sudden we're still playing the comparison game or I should be there or I could be that or am I doing what I'm doing wrong? And, you know, we're jumping all over the place. And I think for you to stay in your own lane and also you can be on social media, but people forget that you can mute people. You can mute, you, you can mute all notifications. That's something that on my computer, if things are popping up and every time a Dean comes through, you know, you're, it takes two minutes to get back on track for our brains to get back on track, mm -hmm. especially for those people like me that have ADHD. So to turn notifications off and, or to, to keep apps even off your phone to where you have to like seek the computer to like actually catch up or do messages. And then to me, you only have so much time. So then the, the things that are really important become a priority. Like I want to talk to that person. So I want to respond to them versus, oh my gosh, I'm scrolling and an hour and a half passes, you know, and yeah. It's, it's just, it's hard that outside noise. And I feel so, I feel like I had a hard enough time, you know, staying in my lane and listening to myself and not getting sucked up into what everybody else wanted from my life and everyone else's opinions.
but I feel like for the younger people, it's that much harder. I just feel like it's such a struggle. So you guys turn off the noise. It's worth it. Just turn off the noise. Even if it's for a week, you know, my husband, and I do this, we'll just like delete everything off of our phones or just say, you know what, for a week, we're not doing this. And his phone got stolen a week ago. And he's like, he went to buy another one. He said, I actually had a sick feeling buying a phone. So he still hasn't bought one. He just keeps asking cool. to borrow mine once in a while. But I was like, it's amazing to watch watch when we step away from all that, what comes out of us, right? That creative side, that new idea, yeah. that connection with an old friend, whatever it may be. So turn off that noise, you guys. So, and yeah. stay in your own lane. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're listening to Autumn's podcast, then turn it on. Yeah. Turn it really on. loud. Yeah. Or Russ yeah. is really loud. Yeah. And <laughs> even podcast, you know, like, and the information that goes in, like I will only listen to positive music or when I have earphones in or when I'm working out, I will make sure it's a podcast that is going to inspire me to be the best me and, or connect in a way or learn about a way I can serve like the sock them up, you know, somewhere I can, um, somewhere else I can serve. So that's awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you've listened to yourself all these years and that you've let yourself come out and you're willing to poop your pants and be you (laughs) (laughs) because that's what it's all about. So thank you for being you in the world. Thank you for everything, all the people that you reach and for living your life alive and helping other people do the same. So uh, if people want to so find much. you, where can they find you? Uh, not down a dark alley, as I say. Um, that's right. You can go to rustydiamond.net, and that's where you're going to find anything you ever need. I have a link tree, and uh, it's long. So just go there. Um, you, I don't know. You want to follow me? There's maybe sometimes I'll post something on social media. The man of know. many hustles. The man of many yeah. hustles and many passions. Yeah. Yeah, you'll you'll find me. I'm easy to find. I'm easy to find. You can call. You can call me if you want. You want to talk hypnosis? You want to talk something? Give me a call. My phone number is all over the internet. That's I right. And care. you do sessions through Zoom, through phone, through all sorts of things. So yeah, if you're interested in that or have never done that, it's a fun place to check it out. That's right. All right. Oh, thank thank you, you, Rusty. Yeah.